Great. Good, good. good. We pulled you guys from up north down here. <laughs> yes. Everybody was up north for the summer. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been up there yet? Oh, yeah. I mean, you go up there a lot. Yeah, I figured. Where do you go up there? Uh, I went up to the Mackinac okay. for the first time this year. Pretty cool. But uh, we usually go to Traverse City, Elk Rapids. Yeah. We have family that have a place in Elk Rapids, so we go up there a lot. It's beautiful. It is nice. Right there by Torch Lake. So Perfect, isn't that, it? That area is gorgeous. So, yeah, but came came back after that announced football and we're <laughs> deep into it you know midway through training camp so two weeks of the first game at andrew stuber do you have a timeline of his injury and is he going to be out do you anticipate missing him the whole season or? well uh, i don't have a timeline i mean i'm not the medical staff they're just working with him to see what what and how quickly they can get him to respond and so we'll see time will tell I think you mentioned you moved Honigford to tackle with him out. Yes. Any other mixing and matching or moving guys around or anything like that? No, we moved uh, Joel. He had been playing right guard. Okay. And with Vastardis playing so well at guard center, we felt very comfortable having Andrew Vastardis as a, a right guard and then bumping Joel out. And Joel has only been there a couple days, but he's looked real comfortable, and he, that may be a better position for him. I think a year ago when I first got here, I tried him out there and he struggled in the pass protection. And now he's over a year of working that and some of his fundamentals that we were able to develop with him. He's really looked good out there in terms of that. So that was the piece that was kept him from playing tackle a year ago. Now I feel real comfortable with him in his pass protection and he knows what's going on. And so I think that's going to be a good move for him and the start us is a solid uh, guy inside. So we got those two. We got Steve Spinellis at center, Chuck at left guard, Ryan Hayes at left tackle. So that's kind of our backup. And then we're bringing these freshmen along and uh, we got some good ones. So we just see which one kind of rises to the top that may be the next freshman to, you know. You talked about individual guys taking that next step. Um, what do you see collectively that makes you think that this group will be better than last year? Well, I mean, how they worked in the off season, because my impressions of spring ball were that every single starter was better at the end of spring ball than they were at the end of in after our last game. So I saw improvement in their spring ball. And then when I got them in August and started coaching them again, all of them were physically in better condition and looked better, were more fit. They made physical changes, which was important. We gave them all goals from the end of spring till August. Here's what we need you to do. And every one of them did it physically, losing, uh, changing their body composition, losing fat, adding muscle mass, doing it in conjunction with the strength coaches and our nutritionists, which are, they do a great job. So each one of them showed up and I was like, you could just see physically day one, they were different guys in a better way. And so that, they care, they work hard, their summer was good, it's important to them. So they're a fun group to coach. I mean, it, it's a blessing to go to work every day and coach those guys here. In the same light, how different does the entire group kind of feel from when you took over the position last spring? Oh, it's a lot different because there was a lot of unknowns. I was an unknown to them, they were an unknown to me. I mean, when you have guys who have that many starts under their belt, like Bredesen and Mike, and then, you know, Caesar's got a lot of, and John, I mean, you know what to expect. So I'm not going out to practice and being surprised, like, what just happened or why, why, what's going on? That, we're past all that. Now we're just trying to climb the mountain, you know, and get to the top. So we're, we're at a different place with the young guys than we are with them. They're, at a higher level of learning and what we're pushing them to get better at. And the young guys, we're working with those guys to develop their base fundamentals and base understanding of the offense. So, but that's the challenge of coaching, but it's fun because there's some talented young guys in this group. How much better is Mike and Wenu moving, having shed some weight? Oh, it's tremendous how, how well he's moving. Um, yeah, I mean, he's still big, but his body composition based on all the testing they do, I mean, is, is very good. His lean muscle mass and so forth. I mean, he's just a big human being, but he can move people, he can move his feet. So we expect a big year out of Mike, yeah. 
Ed, what kind of adjustment is it for guys to block the RPOs? I think Ben and John were both saying that it's a little bit tricky sometimes not knowing where the, the ball might go on a given play. Yeah, there's some challenges to it. I mean, I've coached in this style of offense before many times, so I get all that. But it's it's a little bit different, you know, because we do, you know, some more man blocking. You know, zone blocking, you don't have to worry if your guy moves and he moves into somebody else's gap, that's somebody else's problem. And man blocking, wherever he goes, he's yours. So there's some challenges when we get into any kind of man schemes that we're doing. But, uh, you know, the RPO thing is what it is. I mean, uh, we still want to be physical. We still want to, I mean, we still coach the same things. First step, second step, violent hands and finish. I mean, those are the most important things for an offensive lineman in the run game. That's what we coach. Um, you know, there's, there, but there's nuances. They've had to learn a lot of new things. So most of the learning curve for the veteran guys has just been new terminology, new style of play, no huddle communicating the, the system, you know, before they were in a huddle and they listened to these play calls and all that, and they got to decipher through this long play call for what part of it may mean something to them. Because when you're in the huddle, they tell the receivers what to do and everybody gets, and there's a little piece in there for them. Now in no huddle, they only get their piece. So there's no, so they just, this is mine, but they have a shorter time period to process and play because they're right at the line of scrimmage. Just let's go. But I mean, so, we're, back, we're past that now, though. That was part of the spring and maybe first week of training camp getting, you know, now we're past that and just uh, really trying to develop each guy to the next level. Yeah. You have coached in a bunch of different systems. What do you like about Josh's offense and what are maybe kind of the wrinkles that, that might make it unique? Well, the you know, the, the thing we want to do is, you know, spread people out, put people in space, put athletes in space, find matchups. I, you can identify the defense easier when you spread people out. So, I mean, I've been in a spread offense since 2003. So last year was the first offense that I coached in that huddled since 2003. So, I mean, most everything that we have going on, except for some of the n real cutting edge nuance, nuances that Josh has put in in the passing game that have been great. I mean, I'm excited about those and see those in action with our receivers. But most of the stuff we're doing up front, I'm very familiar with. So I've done that before. So um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because we have the personnel and the people that this should be exciting style of play for us. Compared to the old eight, 10 minute drive, touchdown drive kind of offense, how does this one protect the defense? Well, score more points. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you can't have your cake and eat it. You know what I mean? We want to be explosive. We want to have big plays. But can you control the clock for 35 minutes? Well, I, you know, I mean, big plays mean that you don't have the ball as long. You know, so uh, there's a balance of that. I mean, obviously, you want to create some drives that have first downs and that. But, I mean, we have big play potential. And if we can threaten you with the run game and the passing game and the tie-in of the RPOs. There's creases when receivers and skill guys catch the ball in space, which is the whole speed in space. There's not a lot of people around them. You know, it's not like you're weaving through four or five guys to go score a touchdown. So when you have people spread out, you know, and you get the ball to athletes, things can happen fast. So I think the way you protect your defense is make sure you're smart in, in situations, uh, like where you're backed up, you know, you're backed up, um, you know, minimize your turnovers. We're trying to do a really good job of focusing on taking care of the football. So you got that um, negative yardage plays end up putting you behind the chains. You end up punting and getting off the field. So negative yardage plays, turn, on, turn over the football, and then in certain situations, just making sure you're, you're smart. Uh, but we still want to you know, be explosive and still attack the defense. And if an explosive play comes on the second or third play of a drive, so be it, you know? Most coach? of the time, anytime you have a big play, you look at the stats, if you have a 20 yard or more play, the odds of you scoring on that drive, no matter where it is on the football, I mean, almost double, you know? And so, I mean, it's just statistically, it makes sense if you can get some explosive play, so. 
Okay. We have guys that can do that too. How do you think your coaching philosophy or style has changed since first starting to coach an offensive line at Army? Um, well, just, just, it hasn't changed a lot because I still believe there, I mean, it was so important to teach fundamentals and develop these guys and develop a tough demeanor and, you know, be physical and be, uh, and so we still use that same mindset. Just, uh, maybe a, an athlete who has a little bit more physical skills and abilities, but, uh, I, I haven't changed my style that much. I mean, we still use some of the th same theories in terms of the zone read game and the shotgun zone read game is all predicated on the same theories as the wishbone. There's a read key, there's a pitch key, there's a who, who are you reading? And then the RPO game is now just instead of pitching the ball, throwing the ball off somebody you're reading. So it all makes sense to me all from the start of my option football background. Where, where was the Stuber Mayfield, Stuber Mayfield competition at the time of the injury? I know it sounds like Coach Peak, but it was pretty close. We rotated them in spring. Four, you know, of the 15 practices, seven of, one was a starter, seven, the other was a starter in the spring game, we rotated them dead even in the spring game, I think within one play. And then in training camp, we were doing the same thing. And we were just kept watching and watching to see if one guy would pull away and then one guy would sneak up and then the other guy would catch him. So, I mean, they, they were fighting it out. So it was pretty darn close. I think however it would have, you know, fallen, they both would have played quite a bit. You know, we would have just probably played 60-40 in the game, you know which is a good thing. But uh, now we're trying to get Ryan Hayes to that point, which he's coming along nicely, so. Who would have gotten the 60? <laughs> the, guy, the starter. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever we picked as the starter. Thoughts on your freshman? Uh, thoughts on the freshman. What a great group of overall, just a great group. So we brought in six guys and uh, they're doing a fantastic job. You know, we have three of them playing tackle and three of them playing inside. We have Carson Barnhart from Pawpaw, who, who's really come along nicely at tackle. We have Trevor Keegan from Illinois playing tackle and Trent Jones from uh, Georgia, Atlanta area playing tackle. So those are the three tackles we brought in and love all of them. I am so glad we recruited all of them. I, I think they're all could be factors this year. Hopefully we can get them four games apiece. And if we need them more, we will. But we're not going to hold them back and tell them they're redshirting. It's it's up to them. And as the summer winds down and summer school winds down, and then they can just focus on, you know, so that, that'll be good. Um, inside, we brought in three guys. So we're real pleased about those guys as well. Nolan Rumler, really good player out of Akron, Ohio. Um, so. He was a four-year starter down there for a team that won four state titles. Zach Carpenter from Cincinnati, and he's playing center. He, he looks really good at center. And Jack Stewart from Connecticut, not far from Stuber's hometown over there. So, and he's been a, a real pleasant surprise. He's really a aggressive kid. So those three have concentrated playing in, internally, and then the other three are working at tackle. And uh, I think we, hit the mark on all of them. I can't see any of them that are really lagging behind, but a couple of them may be able to push their way into uh, the two deep roll time will tell. How close is Ryan Hayes to what you kind of envisioned when you put together that plan uh, for him to gain weight, you know, be ready to, to play? He's college. around 300 pounds and he knows what he's doing and he can do it. So now it's just time on task. Cause you think about it, like there's guys who played offensive line their whole life. So they've been doing this for eight years, nine years, 10 years. He's been doing it for one year, one and a half years. So his time on task. So sometimes something happens to him that's never happened before because of our defense and a lot of looks. And so he isn't sure how to respond to that. Because I always say, you know, there's two reasons why a play fails or, or a player fails on a play. One is he was poorly coached. Or two, he didn't have enough time on task to be good at it. So we're hoping to eliminate the poorly coached part that he does. When I say poorly coached, he doesn't understand what he's supposed to be doing. So you get that, you have to eliminate that, which that's my job. And then number two, give him enough time on task to get good at it. Provided he has the talent. Well, Ryan Hayes has the talent. So 
talent and effort are there. So if you have talent, you have effort, then it's either one of the other two things, either time on task or he doesn't understand and hasn't been coached well enough to understand what he's doing. So then you have to go through. So sometimes if a guy's struggling, we reteach the whole thing and then we make sure we give him plenty of time on test and then it comes. So. Any last questions for Coach Warner? Your impressions of the defensive line and, and how much how far they've come being seeing that as an offensive coach? They're a challenge to go against every day. Yeah, they're they're pretty pretty salty. Yeah, they they play hard. I mean that whole group, I don't know, you know, I I just am impressed that they the level of play and the intensity and there's depth there too. It's not like there's two or three guys playing well. There there's a group of guys there that play so I, I think they're they'll have seven or eight guys rolling in there that'll play at a high level and play fast. So that makes it the challenge, man. It's it's a war at practice now. If you stand out there and watch those two units go at it, it's it's like game like in practice, which you know, is good and bad. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah.